Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today this is the Sunday in ordinary time. The church reminds us that true happiness consists in making the right choices in life, placing our trust in God and in his promises and not on human resources. Speaking of choices, Little Johnny came home from the playground with a bloody nose, a black eye, and a tongue clothing. And it was obvious that he had been in a bad fight and he lost. So while his father was patching him up, the father asked his son what happened. He said, well, dad, said Johnny. He said, I challenged Larry to a duel to a fight. And they said, you know, I gave him his choice of weapons. Uh-huh, said the father, that seems fair. Little Johnny said, I know, but I never thought he would choose his big sister. <laughs> he gave him a choice. In the first reading today, Jeremiah reminds us of the consequences of trusting solely on our abilities, on our human resources, and on human beings. I know some of you have been to Israel, and of course you know how the terrain is. You know. The land of Israel in the ancient times was a place of two extremes. Much of its southern half was wilderness, where few living things could thrive, could survive. And this, this contrasted with the fertility of Galilee in the north, with its thriving population. So Jeremiah shows us a cause paired with its opposite, a beatitude of blessing. When he compares the wicked to a barren bush in a desert, and the righteous, those who hope in the Lord and delight in his law, the righteous to a well-watered tree planted beside running waters. The result of our choices is compared to these extremes of nature found in Israel. If we, choose, if we choose God as our hope, our security, and our happiness, we will truly be blessed. On the other hand, if we choose human standards for our guide, rely in our own strength, and the meeting of our own needs and desires as our ultimate goal, then we will find ourselves living in increasing misery and confusion. And that is in woes. Today's first reading calls us to a very deep reflection. We must ask ourselves, in who and in what have I put my trust? Placing our trust in God is the best approach to life. Certainly, we must make efforts and do what we must do as humans. However, we must not forget that it is God who sustains, confirms, and blesses our ways and efforts. So many times we forget our part. Psalm 1 to 5 verses 1 says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that can never be shaken. In the second reading, Paul equally makes the same point. Our hope must not be totally placed on this world or on our own efforts alone, but on Christ who through his resurrection has strengthened our hope of eternity. Trusting hope in the resurrection of Jesus is the basis of our faith, of our own resurrection, and of our eternal bliss. Paul says, we are to be pitied if our hope is for this life only. We are to be pitied. In other words, life does not end here. Our journey with Christ does not end here. It transcends this world. 
While our first reading began with a very strong warning against not trusting in God, today's gospel reading opens with a blessing for those who are ready to do God's will. The Beatitudes is a great song that calls us to a life of virtue, reflection, and total surrender to God's will. There is a book, a book called Didache. Didache is a first century Christian catechism, catechism used to teach new Christians the essence of the Christian faith. And the Didache has this opening lines. There are two ways, one of life and one of death. And there is a great difference between the two ways. The way of life is the way of Jesus, who proclaimed, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. The way of life is the way of Jesus, the way of the Beatitudes, the way of loving service to God and our brothers and our sisters. And this is the way that leads to eternal life. The other way is the way of death. It is the way of self-centeredness. The way of selfishness, the way of self-reliance, the way of immorality, self-indulgence, and immediate gratification. And this way leads to death and hell. And the question is, which way am I going? Which way are you going? Which way are we going? The challenge of the Beatitudes is, are you going to be happy according to the world's standards or according to Christ? The Beatitudes is a new way of looking at things, aided by the light of faith. The things regarded as negative and unattractive are blessings in disguise. So Jesus said, blessed are the poor, the hungry, the sorrowing, and the persecuted. These are things considered to be very negative. And on the other hand, those that we consider good and desirable could be dangerous and harmful. And so Jesus said, woe to you who are rich, woe to you who are filled now, who laugh now, and who are being praised now. The rich, when Jesus makes reference to the rich, the rich are the insolent of today's psalm. You heard it in the rest of the psalm, the insolent. Those who boast of their self-sufficiency. Those who boast on the strength of their, the strength of their flesh, as Jeremiah says in the first reading. The poor are the humble. Those who put all their hope and trust in God. Blessed are they who acknowledge their need for God. I'll conclude with this story. An atheist complained to a friend. He said, Christians have their special holidays such as Christmas and Easter. And the Jews celebrate their holidays too, such as Passover. The Muslims have their holidays, such as Ramadan. Every religion has its early holidays. But we atheists, he said, have no recognized national holidays. It is an unfair discrimination. His friend replied, well, why don't you celebrate April 1st? Because Psalm 14 verses 1 says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. We pray and ask God to bless us and to bless his words in our hearts through Christ our Lord.